guys and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. We're finally gonna do it. We're gonna get some action. I feel like for the past 10 episodes I've been running around talking constantly. So I need to kill something. Yeah. So we're gonna run to the Chantry and do, <laughs> do some more talking and help Sir Perth here and then hopefully We'll be able to get into the castle and get that started. So let's go. Hello, Chantry. Alright, oh, there's uh, Caitlin. Let's talk to her. Hello, Broom. Hi, Caitlin. Bevan said you were the one who found him. I can't possibly repay you. Uh, well, you know what? About the sword I found in your home. Bevan told me about Grandfather's sword. So you have it then? I suppose it won't go to waste, at least. Well... I promised Bevan I would pay you for it. I ha have no idea what it's worth, to be honest. And you found Bevan? I couldn't ask you for money. Well, you know what? It's a very valuable sword. I'm going to give her all the money. Because we have it. So, here, 500 silver. Take it. Oh, how generous we are today, it appears. That's, that's incredibly kind of you. Thank you so much. How can I ever repay you? Um, just stay safe, both of you. The Maker sent you. I just know it. Thank you again. Oh, Morgan. They lost their mom, okay? Now they're all alone. They need some money. Don't be so hateful. Jeez. Alistair appreciated it. Severin, he, he cares neither way. Uh, oh yeah, we're here to see... See the Chantry Lady. You are a stranger amongst us, yet you still agree to defend our village in its darkest hour. We are most grateful to you. Um, I can't, I can, yeah, we can't let this happen to helpless people. I cannot stand by while monsters attack the helpless. Not many in these modern days would honestly say the same. You are a woman of worth, and the Maker will smile upon you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am revered Mother Hannah, head of this Chantry, which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. They are terrified of tonight's attack, and I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? Well, let's see. First of all, we would like your blessing. I would, Mother. Of course, child. Blessed art thou who exists in the Maker's sight. Blessed art thou who seeks his forgiveness. Blessed art thou who seeks his return. <laughs> Blessed is the prophetess, his daughter, sacrificed to the holy flame. May the chant reach the Maker's ears and tell him of our contrition. <laughs> so... Severin was checking his fingernails and Morgan was shaking her head in disgust. I tell ya. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> what is it you need, child? I need, um, just how safe is the Chantry? It is the sturdiest building in the village. The women, elderly, and children will stay here during the battle while the militia and knights protect them. They set up a barricade outside the Chantry to keep monsters from getting inside. If anything gets in, Van Tegan is our only defense. Please, have mercy. Help these people. Do whatever you can. I'm working on it. Sir Perth needs holy protection for the knights. I have done all I can for them. I pray for them each night and seek the Maker's forgiveness for their sins before they face their deaths. What Sir Perth seeks is something that is not in my power to give. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, you're, you're not praying hard enough then. What? No. Can't you just bless them? I can pray with them and give them my blessing. 
But Sir Perth wants me to call upon the Maker to shield them from evil. Well, can't you just tell him the Maker will watch over him? Morale is a powerful thing, you know. You mean you want me to let them think the Maker protects them in a real sense? I will not lie to them like that. Well... Well... <laughs> if it gave them confidence, then it does protect them. Good, good argument there. That is a good argument. I suppose if they believed in the Maker's power, that belief would inspire them somewhat. It, it just seems like trickery. Very well. If it keeps them alive, I will do what I must. I have a number of silver-cast holy symbols. Tell Sir Perth that he can have them, and that wearing them will confer the Maker's protection. Now please, let me tend to these poor folk. I must do what I can, and I suggest you do the same. <laughs> Zevran and Morgan, you guys... I think I'm going to have to swap you two out before we get into the to the action. Okay. Oh, we have to go up and see Sir Perth. Make sure everybody's all armored up. Even Murdoch. Check him out. Owen's been doing some some work. Good job, Owen. The Knights of Redcliffe are ready to fight at your disposal. Um, you said you wanted holy protection. Here you go. Have you spoken to the revered mother? Has she offered anything? Yep, she has some amulets. If they are the same as the symbols worn by their priests, well, that would more than suffice. Um, I'm glad I could help. I'm not gonna... You think that... think it would actually help? I am gonna ask that. Of course I do. These are Maker's symbols. What better protection could we ask for? I will send some men to collect the amulets. Please give my regards to Mother Hannah for seeing some sense at last. Alright. Well, um... Let's see. I don't want to do this just yet. I want to switch out my party. So... Carry on. As you say, we are prepared to meet the enemy here when they come. Make her prepare us. We shall be victorious. All right. What I'm going to do is... What happened? Why is... Find a use for the barrels of oil. No, I'm not going to do that because it will set my people on fire. Okay. We're going to... I'm going to go back to camp for a few and have a couple conversations. I know. More talk, right? But then... And swap out my party. And uh, I'll keep it short. So, if anything interesting happens, I'll let you know. Very well. Where are you going? I thought you were going to help us. I'll be back, don't worry. If you go, I doubt we'll still be here when you get back. I'm just saying. Oh. So I can't go back to camp? Okay. I'm tempted to save it and leave and then come back and see what happens. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> Time to experiment. Save. Now, I'll try this again. I lied to you, you know, about why I left Orle. Huh? I knew you weren't telling me something. I didn't feel like talking about it then, what happened to me. Maybe it will affect us, maybe not, but you should know. I came to Ferelden and the Chantry because I was being hunted in Orle. Hunted? What for? I was framed, betrayed by someone I thought I knew and could trust. Marjolaine. She was my mentor and friend. She taught me the bardic arts, how to enchant with words and song, to carry myself like a highborn lady, to blend in as a servant. The skills I learned, I used to serve her, my bardmaster, because I loved her and because I enjoyed what I did. 
so she was a bard too she claimed to have retired she married a noble and inherited his wealth when he died to many she was just a rich widow i thought i knew her my devotion to her blinded me to her less than noble attributes you can say it was my fault there was a man i was sent to kill i was to bring marjolaine everything he carried i don't know who this man was she gave me a name and a description and i hunted him down i found documents on his body sealed documents uh oh you opened them didn't you my curiosity got the better of me something <clears throat> told me that i needed to know what was in those letters Marjolaine had been selling all kinds of information about Orlais to other countries, Nevara and Antiva among others. It was treason. <laughs> so it's just Orlais. <laughs> Isn't that what bards do? Some. But I had always assumed Marjolaine only operated within Orlais. This was an unhappy surprise for me. My life as bard taught me that my loyalties should be kept fluid. My concern was not that she was a traitor, but that her life would be in danger if she was caught. Orle has been at war with so many countries. It takes a harsh view of such things, as I later discovered. Uh, what do you mean? I should have left well alone, but I didn't. I had to tell Marjolaine I feared for her life. She brushed aside my concern. She admitted her guilt, but said it was in the past. That is why the documents had to be destroyed, she said. I believed her. I kept believing up till the moment they showed me the documents altered by her hand to make me look the traitor. What? Who's they? The Orlesian guards. They captured me. Did terrible things to make me confess and reveal my conspirators. It was a traitor's punishment I endured. And at the end of it, all that awaited me was eternity in an unmarked grave. Wow. How'd you get out? The skills Marjolaine taught me were good for something, at least. I broke free when I saw the opportunity. I did not seek Marjolaine out. If she thought I was coming for her, she would have me caught again. And so you came to Ferelden, to Lothering. I was tempted to confront her. I was furious, betrayed. But what could I do against her? And so I fled to Ferelden, to the Chantry and the Maker. Ferelden protected my person, and the Maker saved my soul. And that is the reason I am here. The real reason. No more lies between us, at least in this. So, thank you for trusting me with this, Liliana. It feels good to have this off my chest. Thank you for listening and understanding. So, Codex updated. Let's see, we've read all that. Liliana, no, let's see. There's more to Liliana than, e than had even been apparent at Lothering, however. She spent much of her life as a bard in Orlais, a minstrel, assassin, and spy employed by the nobles of Aureo. And they're, well, we already read that. What's the new part? Oh, here we go. Her decision to join the Chantry was not merely the product of her disenchantment with the life of a bard. Liliana was framed by her bard master and fled to escape execution as a traitor. Okay. There was one more thing I wanted to ask her, though. Something I can help with? Um. I'd like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Let's see. I want there's uh, hmm. I've heard some rumors about Orlesian spies. There are many rumors about spies, Orlesian or otherwise. What are you referring to exactly? Well, they say you will do almost anything to achieve your goals. I admit I have done many despicable things in my lifetime. I do what I have to do. So do you. So does everybody. Sometimes we must do terrible things to get what we want. If it is any consolation, I always try to use nonviolent means to achieve my ends. Hmm. Well, 
what sorts of nonviolent means. Some bards rely on torture to get what they want. It works effectively, as many will bend under the threat of bodily harm. But there are better ways, more subtle and kind. You will be surprised how easily a person will open up to you, even if all you offer is a listening ear. People respond eagerly to others who they believe understand them. They seek approval, friendship, sometimes love. This can be exploited. Hmm. Good to know. It is a game, one that can be won with little bloodshed if one plays well. Eh. Well. You... You... I don't even know how to respond to that. They all just seem so... judgmental. But at least violence is honest. And crude. Why not make someone want to do what you suggest, instead of forcing them to do it? Everyone can be seduced by the right woman. The trick is predicting who she is and becoming her. Master the game, and no one can resist you. Hmm. And would you say you've mastered this game? If I might be so bold, yes. I was quite good at it. Sometimes, all I had to do was toss a glance and a smile. Men read promises into such things, and will go to great lengths to see that promise fulfilled. Ah. Well, maybe you could smile at the blight and tell it to go away. I could... what? Oh, aren't you funny? I <laughs> see your point. <laughs> we will slay this darkspawn using conventional means, pointy sticks and all that. But come, it is getting late, and there is much to be done. <laughs> I want to ask her about her time, about her mom. Something I can help with? Um, can you teach me to be a bard? Mmm, that's an idea. I've watched you, and I do think you'd find some of my skills quite easy to pick up. Let's just go over there, away from the others, for safety, yes? I expect there shall be daggers flying about willy-nilly for a time. <laughs> willy-nilly. Well, that was easy enough. I think it was already unlocked, though, because of a mod that I don't know which one does it. But anyway. Something I can help with? Uh, I'd like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Well... Why did you decide to come to Ferelden? My mother was from Denerim. Okay, here we go. And I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orle ruled. When Ole was defeated, and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Olesian, the lady returned to Ole. She took my mother with her. I was born in Ole, and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. So... What happened to your mother? Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. Oh, do you remember nothing of your mother? Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. She kept dry flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orlé. But enough about that. Let us move on. Okay. One more chat. Well, two more. You know, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I have something to ask you. Chances are we'll be heading to Denerim soon. And when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to look someone up. Okay. Uh, this wouldn't be some former lover of yours, would it? A former what? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you honestly think I would suggest we go see you together? No. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me either. They kept my birth a secret after all. But after I became a Grey Warden, I did some checking and... Well, I found out she's still alive, in Denerim. Well, that's wonderful news. Have you contacted her? No, 
I thought about writing her, but I never did. And then we were called down to Ostagar, and I never got the chance. She's the only real family I have left. The only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. Well, if you want to, we would try. We could try. Could we? I'd appreciate that. If something happened to her and I never went to at least see her, I don't know if I could forgive myself. Her name is Goldana, and I think she remarried but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then, well, it's worth a look. All right. So we have a quest for Alistair. Let's see if we can get anything out of Zev. Mm hmm. Here to answer some questions. All right. But I get to stare at you luridly while you do so. <laughs> so, does it? what does it take to become an assassin? Well, the crows would have you believe that it is an involved process that takes years of training. The sort that tests both your resolve and your endurance. Survive that process and maybe, just maybe, you're good enough to start being considered one of them. But quite frankly, the truth is that all it requires is the desire to kill people for a living. It's surprising how well one can do in such a field. Hmm. You did quite well, no doubt. Within the crows, I did. But it has been something the crows have devoted a great deal of time to perfecting. An assassin simply specializes in striking from stealth and in maximizing that first attack to be as lethal as possible. Debilitate your foe, either by poison or by crippling their limbs, makes any follow-up combat you need to engage in that much simpler. Hmm, so it sounds like it could be useful. See? Getting paid for the act is beside the point. An assassin is more a tactical choice than a lifestyle. Of course, the crows like to pretend that their abilities are trade secrets, shrouded in shadows and wrapped in a blanket of mystery. Uh, so let's just keep this between you and me, shall we? Hmm? Okay. So, that's all we're going to do here. Uh, let me see if I have anything to sell, and then we'll head back to Redcliffe, and hopefully it's still there. Okay. Redcliffe is still here. Switched up my party. I got Sten and, and Wynn. <laughs> Alistair and Puppy. So now we can go talk. also put a rune on my sword. It's kind of annoying, actually. But anyway gonna go talk to Sir Perth now and get this thing started. Finally some action. I just, I, I needed to go um, have those conversations. I, I felt like I needed to have those before I did anything else just to make some things make sense. I already got that flower. Okay. Mother Hannah's amulets have greatly bolstered my men's confidence. You couldn't have armed us with any better than our faith in the maker. I'm glad that helped you. So, what is your status? I distributed Mother Hannah's amulets to the other knights. It is encouraging to think the Maker watches over us in our hour of need. Overall, I believe my knights are ready for the coming battle. Morale is high, thanks to you. Right. I'm ready. Let's do this. There is still time before the sun goes down. If you have not yet spoken to Murdoch, or if there is anything you have planned... Actually, okay, let me go Good. talk to Murdoch. So do One whatever you time. must and return before it is time. He's made I will me, be here. He's made me doubt myself, like I should forgot to talk to Murdoch about something, so let me go do that. Jeez. Murdoch. I hear you got the tavern serving the militia free ale now. While I don't favor my men being drunk come sundown, I suppose it helps morale to have their minds taken off. What's to come? You have my thanks. The repairs are underway surprisingly quickly, considering how drunk Owen is. We may just make it. Well, I'd like to talk about Dwin. Thanks for persuading him to come out here. He's going to be a great help. I just know it. Okay. Um... There's not much time before sundown. Yeah, I know. Let's see. How's morale? The men's spirits are high for now. Far better than I expected, to be honest. 
Dwin's presence makes the men a bit more confident. It helps to know a veteran is on our side tonight. My men are getting free drinks at the tavern. I suppose it's better to drown your fears rather than go mad waiting for certain death. I'm tempted to have a few ales myself. Since you convinced Owen to start repairs, we're pretty well armed now. That is a relief, let me tell you. Overall, I'd say the militia's very ready to fight. Never thought I'd say that, but there you go. Is there anything else? Nope. I have a good feeling about tonight. Okay, cool. Now they're all armored up, and we can go talk to Sir Perth and start this thing. Finally. Oh my gosh, it's been forever. Let's do it. And I want to keep everybody alive as many as I can. I hate it when they die on me. The Knights of Redcliffe are ready to fight at your disposal. All right, let's do it. There is still time before the sun goes down. If you have not yet spoken to Murdoch, or if there is anything you have planned... No, we're good. We're good. Good luck to you, then. And may the Maker watch over us all. <gasps> They're coming! Get to your positions! Make ready! It's time, men. Know that we fight for the Maker and our hour. I shall do it. Get on. Let's be wary. Come, let us end this. Look at Stan and Alistair over there. Okay. I need to see everybody's Hey Dwin's up here. I need to see everybody's health. Because I don't want anybody to die. <laughs> I'm very, very concerned that people are gonna die. Be ready. There must be others left in the All right, so they got this one. I wish I had a good AOE. I can do a bomb right there. Let's see. What about right there? As you say. Okay, that was better than nothing. I'm just gonna stab this guy. How are my people looking? I don't see them take any damage, actually. Yeah, there we go. How we doing? Good, good, good. Uh oh, we got a we have a thug that's kind of low on health. Got to keep an eye on him. Dwin is full health though. Every, most everybody is. That's good. See if this fire. If you'd have set those oil barrels here. All this would be burning, and all these people here would be taking damage, and it would be bad. So, not having the fire, good idea. Don't hit my dog. They will sing of this battle for years to come. Look, men, the maker is on our side. He will. All right, where's that thug? Hey, Win. Here's what we're gonna do. Will you cast your spell? Now I want you to take a big ol' and then heal this guy over here, please. There we go. Good job. Now what am I doing? 
thug those they're not very uh they're not as strong as most everybody else thugs need love too Ready. there we go as you said. all right there's one left they got this guy the maker will protect us tonight well okay that one little thug dude Help me! It's the guy. <gasps> We're trying. We're trying. He <laughs> said, "Help me." All right. He's fighting it all by himself. We got you, buddy. Yes. Is he dead? No. Why is everybody not attacking the? Where's my dog? Is he attacking him? Thug has the aggro at the moment. Let me see how this works. Yes. Why can nobody attack him? We are victorious. The monsters are attacking from the lake. They're attacking the barricades. We need help. All right. Come on, we need to hurry! Knight, stay here and guard the path. Let's go. Let me turn that off before I die. I already turned it off, okay. I think this is where Murdoch is down here. So we have to make sure he does not die. Alright, let's see what we got. <gasps> Look, the militia men. Okay, there's Thomas and two militia. Oh my goodness. Okay. Heal. That militia man. And. Oh, come on. Too many! And heal this militia man. And then I want... Where's Alistair? As you say. We're gonna lose some militiamen. Oh, well, they're nobody. I mean, they're not named. To say they're nobody is kind of... Yeah. Let's put regeneration on that guy and see if it helps. Nope, he died. <laughs> he died, so that's not helping anybody. But, so there's Thomas. Where's Murdoch? He's not dead, is he? If he's dead, he died way before we got here. Yeah. Okay. Shoot him, will ya? Okay. So there's another militia, militia. And that guy's gonna die. I really don't want him to die. Right, I'm gonna have to get over there with my sword, I think. Daggers. Okay. Well, this little fella here, he's gonna, he's gonna go down. If that's what you want. Oh. They just keep sitting. I still don't see Murdoch. I don't want Thomas to die, though. Gotta keep an eye on Thomas. He's the little guy that was at the gate when we came in. 
We need to go. Oh my gosh, look at him. You know what? We're gonna have to like... There we go. Oh, he died. Thomas is still doing okay though. I guess I'm not gonna try to worry about the rando militia guys. Just the named ones. There's just they keep coming. It shall be done. Good job, puppy. Yeah. Very well. Okay, how's Thomas doing? He's still doing good. And this guy, let's see if we can help this guy. Oh! Dang! Hey, get off my dog! We have more coming in? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, oh, all kinds. From everywhere. Lovely. Uh, it looks... No, they're not messing with wind. So this is good. Our people are doing their jobs. So that's awesome. What we need to do is keep that guy... Let's try to keep that guy alive. If we can. Yeah. I'm no push off. But you'll see that's it. Let's do a Okay. And then heal this guy one more time. Who's saying help me? I'm trying. I'm trying. Shall be oh, he died. I still. Oh no, not Thomas. Okay, all right, we have to help Thomas. He's getting a little beat down over there. And what can we do? Heroic aura. What's that one do? Bonus to attack. Thomas, you can have that buff. I can do so. Red Cliff and and put some health regeneration on the arm. There we go. Now take another health. I mean, mana thing. <clears throat> Think we're doing all right. Okay. Very well. Looks like they've stopped coming. Is that all of them? Oh, there's one over there. Lost another one. Is it over? Oh, it's over. I wonder how many people died. I never did see Murdoch. Dawn arrives and we survive the night. We are victorious. And though this victory came at great cost, we must remember none of us would be here were it not for the heroism of these good folk beside me. I thank you, dear lady. Truly the Maker smiled on us when he sent you here in our darkest hour. I was happy to help defend the village. Oh, ask. <laughs> yeah. I was happy to help. Let us bow our heads and give honor to those who gave their lives in defense of Redcliffe. 
Murdoch of Redcliffe, Mayor and beloved father, we salute you. You and so many others who have perished here, walk with he who is your maker. Long may you know the peace of his love. So let it with the be. Maker's favor, the blow we delivered today is enough for me to enter the castle and seek out your Arl. Be wary and watch for signs of renewed attack. We shall return with news as soon as we are able. Now we've no time to waste. Meet me at the mill. We can talk further there. So I never saw Murdoch. Does he just die automatically or what? Like I never saw him. But anyway. Stan has a level up. Yay! Alright, Stan. 20. Hmm. Let's give you a little more of everything. Parity. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That should keep him from getting aggro unless he taunts. So I'll have to look at his tactics and see. Okay. Alright. Okay, I have him set up. So now we can go talk to Van Tegan. I want to go in here though and see what the Chantry's saying. <clears throat> Everybody okay in here? Caitlin? You saved us. I can't believe we're alive and it's finally over. <sighs> what are you going to do now? With all the money you gave us for Grandfather's sword, I'll have someone take us to Denryn. With any luck, we'll be safe there. Make a watch over you. I'll never forget you. All right. Well, she is happy and on her way. Good deal. Good deal. Mother there Hannah? are many gone whom we must honor. But we must also remember those who aided us in our darkest hour. Hello, child. It's all over now? When is mother coming back? She's probably not. Okay. I guess we're done here. Jenna? These are terrible times. Just terrible. Alright, well. I guess Caitlin was the only one to talk to in there. Let's go do our thing. The Honor. end is upon us! The dead rise, and foul magic spreads across the land! What? Repent your sins before death! Beg for the Maker's divine forgiveness! Dude. You have... have you repented your sins? I have. I have repented. Oh, Maker! Forgive me my sins! Forgive my fellow brothers and sisters! Look upon us with kindness as we are swallowed by the darkness. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's terrible. That's good. And then kill him? No. Perhaps you need to spread the word further. You're right. The soldiers need to hear this. The ones fighting against the king. They must beg for forgiveness. They must repent. I will go and tell them. I will tell them salvation is possible. <laughs> well, that's one way to get rid of that guy. Okay. There's Thomas. Let's talk to him. I'm so glad he's alive. So we won the battle? If this is what war is like, with so many people hurt and dying, I don't want to think about what fighting the Dark Swarm will be like. Van Tegan or Al Eamon will be calling for volunteers soon, won't they? They'll need an army to fight in the south now. I'll go when they... Call me, I guess. I'm going to get drunk first, though, if you'll excuse me. Well, <laughs> at 
least he survived. Hopefully Gwen's in here. Good job, Gwen. Phew. Some fight. Reminds me why I left Orzammar in the first place. Well, thank you for helping with that. Hey, anything for Redcliffe, right? Whatever. First thing <laughs> I'm gonna do is get some sleep. For about a week. Go celebrate or whatever it is you're gonna do. You won, right? You're a hero. Or something. <laughs> I guess that's him being nice. I'll take it. Okay, now, now we're going to go talk to Van Tegan. I have ran around enough. That fight, I thought it took longer than that, but I know this is not the way to go, but I want to bridge. Were you really in that cage for 20 days? It might have been closer to 30. I stopped counting after a while. What did you do? I mean, 20 days is a long time to sit in one place and do nothing. On good days, I posed riddles to the passers-by, offering them treasures in exchange for correct answers. Really? No. Ah, <laughs> oh, too bad. That's got serious potential. <laughs> hey, there's a chantry board here now, and a Blackstone Irregulars thing. Grease the wheels, my friend. <laughs> Pass on or preach to certain individuals. Okay. Hooded couriers, is that who we have to talk to? Is that the hooded couriers quest? I think. Okay. Do I have anything to turn in here? Make us blessings upon you. Deliver the notices of appreciation to five hooded couriers. Okay, Warden. yeah. And let's look at the Chanter's board. It is begun. Okay. Let's caravan down. Fortunate news is right at Dark Spawn. Okay, we need to help some people. And help more people. Um, what is this one? An urgent plea from Brother, Brother Baird. Something is stalking the wilds, killing the good merchants who support our towns in these difficult times. One would assume that this is the reason the Chantry employs the use of the Templars, but they are unmindful of a simple brother's plea. I understand they have the darkspawn and the constant threat of uncontrolled magic to contend with, but are they not meant to protect the common people? Whatever the source of this thing, whatever unconscious unconscionable force has unleashed it. Someone must make the road safe again. All we know is that it's not animal, bandit, or darkspawn. If anyone will stand, I will prov provide my own wealth as compensation. Okay, let's look at some quests. A strange creature is killing merchants. Be on the lookout while traveling, and it may find you. Lovely. Go to the region marked on your map to determine the status of the conscripts of Company East Hill. Okay. And travel to the trade route marked on your map and determine the fate of the border caravan. And. Alright, that's a bunch of little traveling quests. So I'm glad we did that. Okay, now, this time for real, going to see Van Tegan. Ah, uh, it is sad to think of how much death there has been here. But we have saved the village beyond all expectations. You have done well, my friend. I will remain here to guard the village and receive any fellow knights as they continue to return. At least until the castle is retaken. You've done well too, Sir Perth. All right, Tegan. Odd how quiet the castle looks from here. You would think there was nobody inside at all. But I shouldn't delay things further. I had a plan. To enter the castle after the village was secure. There is a secret passage here, in the mill, accessible only to my family. Well, why didn't you mention this before? I knew you would choose to enter the castle instead of staying in the village. And we needed warriors. I'm sorry if I... Make us breath. Tigan. Thank the Maker, you yet live. Isolde. You're alive. 
How did you... What has happened? I do not have much time to explain. I slipped away from the castle as soon as I saw the battle was over. And I must return quickly. And I... need you to return with me, Tika. Alone. Huh. We're gonna need more of an explanation than that. What? Uh, who is this woman, Tigan? You remember me, Lady Assault, don't you? Alistair. Of all the... Why are you here? They are Grey Wardens Isold. I owe them my life. Pardon me, I... Yeah, don't be a bitch. I would exchange pleasantries, but... Considering the circumstances... Please, Lady Assault. We had no idea anyone was even alive within the castle. We must have some answers. I know you need more of an explanation, but I... I, I don't know what is safe to tell. Tigan, there is a terrible evil within the castle. The dead waken and, and haunt the living. The mage responsible was caught, but still it continues. And I think Connor is going mad. We have survived, but he won't free the castle. He has seen so much death. You must help him, Tigan. You are his uncle. You could reason with him. I do not know what else to do. Hmm. Uh, why do I get the feeling you aren't telling us everything? I... I beg your pardon? That's a rather impertinent accusation. Well, not if it's true. An evil I cannot fathom holds my son and husband hostage. I came for help. What more do you want from me? The truth. But I do not understand what you mean by this evil. Did it create the walking corpses? What is it? Something the mage unleashed. So far it allows him and Connor and myself to live. The others were not so fortunate. It killed so many and turned their bodies into walking nightmares. Once it was done with the castle, it struck the village. It wants us to live, but... I do not know why. It allowed me to come for you, Tigan, because I begged, because I said Connor needed help. Hmm. Do you think this evil could be some kind of demon? Yeah, probably. I mean, it's a mage. I... I do not know. Oh, Nico's mercy. Could it truly be a demon? I, I can't let it hurt my Connor. You must come back with me, Tegan. Please. All right. Tell me about this mage you mentioned. He is an infiltrator, I think. Uh, one of the castle staff. We discovered he was poisoning my husband. That is why Eamon fell ill. Hmm. Eamon was poisoned? He claims an agent of Terran Loganes hired him. He may be lying, however. I cannot say. Nope, he's telling the truth. So why must Tegan go alone, then? For Connor's sake, I promised I would return quickly and only with Tigan. Tigan, Who did you I promise? know you could order your men to follow me when I return to the castle. I beg you not to, for Connor's sake. All right, we need to decide what to do. The king is dead, and we need my brother now more than ever. I will return to the castle with you, Isolde. <gasps> Thank the maker. Bless you, Tigan. Bless you. <sighs> this is a mistake. You're going to get yourself killed. But it seems you have... Wait, what good will that do? I'm not certain, to be honest. I cannot let Isolde return alone. Perhaps I can help Connor or Eamon. Perhaps this is really a trap, but this is my family. I must try. I have no illusions of dealing with this evil alone. You, on the other hand, have proven quite formidable. Isolde, can you excuse us for a moment? We must confer in private before I return to the castle with you. Please do not take too long. I will be by the bridge. Here's what I propose. I go in with Isolde, and you enter the castle using the secret passage. My signet ring unlocks the door. Perhaps I will distract whatever evil is inside and increase your chances of getting in unnoticed. What do you say? Well, let's see. And that's it. It's all up to me. Good. This is the way I'd prefer it. Yeah. Then it's for the best. 
I would prefer to go inside with you, but I have no choice in the matter. Sir Perth and his men can watch for danger at the castle entrance. If you can open the gates from within, they can move in and help you. I don't think there's anyone else who can help you. If you choose not to go, then it's up to me to do what I can. Here is my signet ring. It will open the lock on the door in the mill. Whatever you do, Eamon is the priority here. If you have to, just get him out of there. Isolde, me, and anyone else, we are expendable. Oh no, I don't believe that. I'll rescue all. Mm. Yeah, I will rescue you all, I promise. <laughs> I could stop you from doing this, you know? Some of these answers, I just don't know how I could ever say. <laughs> I can't make myself say some of these things. You are brave as well as beautiful, it seems. The Maker smiled on me indeed when he sent you to Redcliffe. If only this had been... One fool plan on top of another. But I can delay no longer. <laughs> Allow me to bid you farewell. And good luck. Tegan likes me. Hear that, Alistair? Sten? Tegan likes me. Alright, guys. Move along, friend. Okay. Thank you. At least he was polite about it. Okay, I'm going to stop here. And when we come back, we're going inside. Finally. Seems like I haven't done anything exciting in, in quite a while. I mean, other than this last fight we just had. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.